This is section 3.3, Dividing Polynomials, the Remainder and Factor Theorems. This section feels kind of like it was just thrown in and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to be placed where it is. But where we are going is we are heading towards where we can solve any polynomial equation. As of right now, we can solve any quadratic equation because we have the quadratic formula and it will solve any of them. We can solve other polynomials if they are given to us either in factored form or they are um, easy for us to factor using another method. But we cannot yet solve a general polynomial equation. One of the tricks we're going to have is we're going to be using division in order to get these things solved. So we need to talk about how to divide polynomials. And then in a later section, we're going to apply these skills to solving equations. Now you've probably done long division before. The hardest part of this is making sure that you do everything neatly and that you don't lose part of your work as you're going along, okay? Um, the long division is called this because it feels a whole lot like the long division you learned in elementary school. Okay, so um, how many times does 7 go into 25? You get an answer with a remainder. That's the kind of thing we're talking about here. Okay, so if I want to divide the polynomial x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6, and I want to divide this by the polynomial x minus 3. There are a couple of things you need to check for before you write down your problem. What you want to do is you want to look at each piece, both the, this would be the numerator of a fraction if you wrote it as a fraction, and this would be the denominator if you wrote it as a fraction, and we do have some that are written that way. Remember, fractions are divisions. You want to look at each piece and make sure that the polynomials are written in descending power order. So you want to start with your largest exponent and you want to end with your smallest. And you also want to make sure that you don't skip over an exponent. So here I have a third power. That means I want to make sure that I have every power smaller than three. So I have a three, I have a two, I have a one, and then a constant. And remember, a constant is equivalent to saying it's an x to the zero term because that's one. Here, my largest exponent is a one, and then I have a zero. Now, if we have skipped over something, like we do, say, right here in this problem here, we're going to have to make an adjustment as to how we write the problem. If things are not written in the right order, we just need to rearrange them. But in this case, everything is here, and everything is in the right order. So I'm going to write this so that it looks like a long division. I'm going to write x minus 3 divided into, and I'm going to write down this polynomial. As a suggestion, space this out a little bit more than you think you ought to, so that as we're working this, we don't lose things. Okay, so I have x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. Okay. Now, how do we solve this? The first thing we do is we're just basically concentrating on our first terms. Whatever happens to the rest of this happens. Ask yourself, what do I need to multiply this by to get to here? Well, here I have 1x, that's x to the first power, and I want x cubed. That means I need to multiply it by another 2x's. So I need to multiply this by x squared. It's not absolutely necessary, but it will help you out if you line up your like terms here. It will help you figure out when you are done. Okay, so in order to change this x into an x cubed, I need to multiply it by an x squared. Now what we want to do is we want to take this value and distribute it through here. So x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times a negative 3 is negative 3x squared. Now if we've done this correctly, these two terms should be exactly the same. Now what we do here is we take this and we multiply it through here and then we subtract. 
I need to subtract all of this. And if you're subtracting a whole polynomial, what you're doing is you change the sign on each individual term, and then you add them. Now what should happen here is our first term should cancel out because we tried to match it and then when we subtract it away, it should go away. Now we combine like terms everywhere we have something. Negative 2x squared plus 3x squared is x squared. Now technically, you only need to bring down your next term. But after years of teaching, I'm going to suggest that you bring down the next part as well. I've seen too many students lose part of the problem because they didn't carry everything down or they didn't have everything lined up. Okay, now we repeat the process. I want my x to become an x squared. What do I have to multiply this by to get to an x squared? Well, here I have one of them. I need two of them. So I need to multiply by another x. Now my signs here are the same, they're both positive, so I'm going to multiply by a positive x. Now take the x and distribute it through here. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Okay, now just like up here, I want to subtract all of this away from this. So I change every sign in my second polynomial, and I strongly suggest that you change, if you have a minus, you change it to a plus up here. You don't wanna, you don't wanna do this. And the reason for that is if you need to come back and check your work, if you just get in the habit of just making this a plus, then you'll look at it, especially if you're not using different colors, and you'll ask yourself, well, did I change that sign or did I not? Did I mess up here or did I mess up here? So just change the sign above it and you won't ever have that question. Okay, so our first term should cancel out. I have negative 5x plus 3x, so that's a minus 2x, and now I'm going to bring down the plus 6. Now do this one more time. I want this x to become a negative 2x. So what do I need to multiply this by to get to here? Well, I need to multiply it by a negative 2. So I put minus 2 right here. And I'll take this negative 2 and distribute it through here. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. Now let's change our signs. So that's a plus, that's a minus. Our first term cancels out as it should, and then it so happens that our second term or our last one cancels out as well, and that's a zero. Okay, so we've done all the work, we just need to recognize our answer. Okay, let's do a little bit of vocabulary. Okay, if I have a division This up here is called the quotient. Okay, this is the divisor. This is the dividend. And down here, whatever number you get right here or whatever you get right here, this is your remainder. Okay, so your quotient is right up here. A quotient is generally the answer to a division problem, and you have a remainder right here. In this case, our remainder is zero. That means we would say that this and this are factor, well, this is a factor of this because it divides in evenly. We're gonna get to more, some more definitions about this in a second. In this case, our remainder is zero. So how would you write your answer? Well, your answer is x squared plus x minus two, okay? Now on the computer, they always make you write in your answer and it's always going to be, your remainder, it's always going to be plus whatever your remainder is over your divisor, x minus three. Okay, now generally speaking in math, if your remainder is zero, normally we don't write this last part. Okay, your answer is right here. 
Now, how might you check this if you wanted to? Well, to check any division problem, you take your divisor and multiply it by your quotient and then add your remainder. So what I could do to check this is I could multiply x minus 3 times x squared plus x minus 2 and then add your remainder, which is 0, and you should always get your dividend, x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. Now, I'm not going to go through this whole check, but this is exactly how you would do it. Your quotient times your divisor plus your remainder should equal your dividend.